United Nations is investigating claims that North Korea tried to supply the Assad regime in Syria with chemical weapons. Two shipments intercepted in the last six months. Now, Syria has been criticized for using the banned nerve agent sarin and chlorine in chemical attacks. Meantime, photos out of North Korea appear to show that it's working on a new, more sophisticated rocket design. It's sending a message that North Korea has more powerful ICBMs, the intercontinental ballistic missiles, in the works. Joining me now, retired four-star general and Fox News contributor, General Jack Keane. Good to see you, General. Good to see you, Liz. So we still need to be concerned about North Korea, right? Oh, yeah. That, this problem isn't going away. And this specific issue dealing with Syria... North Korea is one of the biggest arms dealers in the world, and they obviously they make these arms for money, obviously, and, and, and that is what is feeding the development of their nuclear ICBMs. So anything we can do to shut down this arms dealing certainly is, is something we got to do. Obviously, they're not going to be selling it to any of our allies, that's for sure. I mean, they, they, they do arms deals with their cousins the Iranians, and, and every time there's a nuclear test in North Korea, the Iranians are present. And the Iranians are firing IC, uh, ICBM and ballistic, not ICBMs yet, but ballistic missiles that look very similar to Iran's. And, and certainly, here's their other cohort is Syria, another one is Venezuela. So these are all countries that are not friendly to the United States, to be sure, and to our Western allies. But they, they are in the arms merchant business, and I'm delighted they got caught at it. They haven't told us who did that, and we can only speculate. And eventually we'll probably find out, possibly the Israelis, possibly the United States. But that's not what's important. The fact is they stopped it. You know, General, you make a good point about Venezuela, too. Intelligence officials have come on the show to say Hezbollah is in and out of Venezuela. Is it possible, sir, and correct me if I'm wrong, is Kim Jong-un... Looking around, is he looking at what happened in Libya and Ukraine? They gave up their weapons, so why should he? Well, no, he actually believes that. He, he's seen, what, from his mind, he's always been paranoid about the United States, even more so than his father and his grandfather, as the, the one country that can conduct the regime change. And so when, when he sees the United States, regardless of what our motivations were, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Libya, change the regime out and he watches Gaddafi give it up and he watches what took place in Ukraine as you mentioned uh, yes he he sees that as troubling to himself and is he's actually fairly rational in the development of his strategy his strategy is is simply he doesn't agree with his grandfather and father that having nuclear weapons pointed at South Korea was sufficient what he really wants is to put the American people at risk, and therefore there'll never be a regime change. The American people are at risk by China's nuclear ICBMs and also Russia's nuclear ICBMs. So that, that's, that's where he's coming from. Let's turn to the, uh, the president's strategy on terror. President Trump outlined his strategy in Afghanistan. Now, he has been criticized. It's, you know, Afghanistan, as you know, has been called a graveyard of empires. But it's, is it that we are building a permanent base in Afghanistan to battle terrorist activity in the area? Is that and also handle a nuclear-tipped Pakistan? Yeah, I mean, the president has absolutely made the, the, right, the right decision, overcoming his own reluctance and his own instincts. You know, 16 years, we don't have much to show for it. Why are we still there? Those are all very good questions to ask. The truth is, U.S. policy has driven us to 16 years. We could have wrapped this up a long time ago, and that's not the purpose of your question. But the point is, is that central to his strategic decision to continue to be involved in Afghanistan is the fact that he sees Afghanistan as a potential safe haven for international terrorists as it had been prior to 9-11 and the fact that it sits right next door to a nuclear uh, Pakistan and not too far away a nuclear India with the potential for nuclear terrorism uh, given that 20 of the 98 terrorist organizations reside in that area he said that is far too much of a threat to the American people and our allies, and we've got to stay the course. That's what this is really about. You know, sir, correct me, General, did you say that we could have handled this 16 years ago, and how? How could we have handled that? Well, in we never put in... Listen, we have the capability with the Afghans to train them up to, the, to their capability. If we had put the right forces in there, we could have done it. When we went to Iraq for six years and fought a war that we thought was going to last six weeks, 
Afghanistan was a second and distant priority. Didn't get resources. It wasn't 2009 until Obama gave them the military some resources, but he didn't give Generals McChrystal and Petraeus what they had asked for as the minimum to win. He gave them 25 percent less and then pulled the forces out after 15 months. That doomed Afghanistan to the situation we're in. Those are U.S. priority decisions that were made by two previous presidents. And President Trump is right. He got stuck with something that's uh, a mess, as he calls it, and he's trying to make the, the most out of it. And I think, by and large, the, the decisions he made are the sound ones to continue to protect the American people. Is President Trump right to put the pressure on Pakistan? Yeah, we can't actually get the job done uh, with the resources we're going to use if, if we don't do something about Pakistan. Pakistan has is providing sanctuary to the Afghan Taliban. So our viewers understand this, how serious this is. For 16 years, the Pakistan military, our ally, has provided intelligence, resources, training to the Afghan Taliban so they can conduct successful operations against U.S. soldiers and NATO allies in the Afghan military. That is an indisputable fact. We, we caught them cold at it. They lie to our leaders when we challenge them with it. They have never admitted it. They're going to try to do the same thing with the Trump team. And war is a fundamental test of wills. This is the area where the Trump national security team is going to be tested because they're going to lie to them they're going to push back on this they're going to interrupt the supply lines for our u.s nato forces it all goes through pakistan if we cause them too much trouble and they're going to they're going to try to get president trump to do the same thing that president bush and obama did and that is back off and leave us alone and, and that that'll be a huge mistake because we cannot accomplish our job in Afghanistan mm -hmm. with those two sanctuaries in Pakistan. And Pakistan gets a lot in the way of U.S. foreign aid, right? They do. Mm -hmm. Every single year they get about a billion or so dollars. But even if we take the money away, they won't change their behavior. They'll get that money from China. We got to sanction mm -hmm. their key leaders, the chief of staff of the army and the chief of their intelligence service. They're the people who are actually making these decisions. We should go out internationally mm -hmm. and deny them travel, freeze their assets, and, and we've got to get really tough. And if they're not okay. going to change, I'll just end on this, Liz, mm -hmm. then we've got to target these sanctuaries ourselves and go after them.